honestly, I must say that many Italians look at Italian American cuisine very, very critically. What do Italian Americans get totally wrong about Italian food? One notable example of a combination in Italian American cooking that would be considered really a culinary heresy in Italy is uh, the pairing of chicken with pasta. Wow. <laughs> Particularly <laughs> in dishes like uh, chicken alfredo, or chicken parmesan. To truly understand Italy, you've got to know our food. I have to call my mom as soon as I get off and just let her know that her chicken parm uh, dinner is not authentic. I'm sure she'll be thrilled. <laughs> Hi, I'm Danielle Romero, and thank you so much for being with me today on my channel, where we have been talking about what it means to be an American and American identity. And if you've been on my channel, you know that my dad's ancestry is Italian and my mom is everything else. And I've been really interested to dive into the Italian American experience. And I wanted to talk about food. I think food is such a hot button issue with people. Um, and people kind of use it as a litmus test of just like, how connected are you to this culture? Are you a fraud or what? It wasn't until recently that I found out that a lot of the foods I considered like Italian foods are actually just American foods. And so I wanted to talk to someone who could give me a bigger perspective on this. I thought, let's go to Italy. So enter Guido. He uh, read this hilarious blog. It's called whyitalians.com and you should definitely go check it out. I will link to it below. He was born in Florence and he lives in Milan. He writes a blog that he says is to answer all the questions foreigners ask about Italians and how do Italians actually eat. Only issue is we were a little concerned about the internet connection. So instead of doing a live interview, he answered questions for me. I'm gonna watch the answers to those questions live with you right now and maybe stop and interject and we're gonna talk about it. So I'm gonna let Guido introduce himself and we will dive in and find out what do Italian Americans get totally wrong about Italian food? I'm guessing that's a lot. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, Guido Pasquariello, a digital marketeer and blogger. I've been living in Milan for over a decade now, but uh, I was born and raised in Florence, in Tuscany. My dad's from Naples and my mom is Florentine, so I got to soak up both Tuscan and Campanian food cultures from uh, a young age. And uh, this is probably sparked my curiosity about Italy diverse cuisine, culinary scene, and it's partly why I started uh, whyitalians.com. The first time I was in New York, I try some Italian American dishes. I like them. They have a taste I enjoy, but they are really different from traditional Italian dishes. Why? Because the cultural substrate in which they were created is different. Many Americans wonder, okay, but why don't we find these Italian American dishes in Italy? About uh, a year ago, I decided to launch this new blog focusing on Italian eating habits and local uh, regional food culture. When I first started writing, I knew I wanted to talk about food, but uh, more from an eater perspective than a chef. I realized that uh, there are millions of blogs out there doing a great job explaining uh, Italy's famous recipe, but they often miss out on the cultural context of those dishes. I thought, a recipe blog should stick to recipe, right? It is normal because when you're about to cook, uh, you're not looking to deep dive into <laughs> history or culture. You just don't want to cook. So I figured, why not flip the script and create a, a, a food blog that's not so much about replicating Italian dishes, but uh, about understanding the why behind them. I try to bust meat, stereotypes, and explain. To truly understand Italy, you got to know our food. Because for Italy, cuisine is not just a series of recipe or list of ingredients. It's one of the fundamental building blocks of our culture. And it's not easy or immediate to mix it uh, with new things. 
Uh, what's been interesting to me is I'm learning about um, the Italian American experience is that I know the reunification of Italy, that was less than 200 years ago, right? But when we're talking about that area of what we now call Italy, that culture, it is so old. It is ancient. And, and what he's saying, this idea of um, it's not easy to just mix in a new thing and have something new happen. And it's a very different dynamic than I feel like what you have in the United States. We're such a young nation. And, you know, I, I think a lot of the foods that we eat, we don't even realize reflect the fusion that is occurring here. And we think that's kind of the original, um, but it's not. It's our own American version. Especially in recent times, Italy is aware of our cuisine's richness and does everything to defend the passiton. Even if sometimes this led to some exaggerations, but the interesting thing isn't about what's better than what, but it's understanding the difference and why two related cuisines are also so diverse. All right, so my next question for Guido was um, that many Italian American dishes uh, we sometimes assume were imported from Italy with our immigrant ancestors, like pizza, big ziti, lasagna, chicken parm with pasta. Um, I was asking if there, if there were any dishes that Americans might be surprised to learn actually originated not in Italy, but they came from the United States. Of course. Italian-American cuisine has literally invented many dishes with Italian taste or memory, but they didn't exist here and uh, never arrived here in Italy. Among the most uh, striking is spaghetti and meatballs. While meatballs are common in Italy, they are typically served on their own. Yes, there are <laughs> fierce courses in southern Italy, with the kind of uh, mini meatballs uh, in their pasta, but they are definitely not the spaghetti meatballs that you have. Mini meatballs? Mini meatballs? Where have mini meatballs been my whole life? The combination of spaghetti and large meatballs in tomato sauce is distinctly Italian-American creation. I'm not saying that today there isn't a restaurant in Italy that serves them, <coughs> but it's definitely a dish that's uh, very complicated to find find it here. Staying on pasta, Fettuccine Alfredo. It's true that they were born in Rome by Alfredo di Lelio, but today they are practically unknown here, or simply served as uh, pasta al burro, pasta with mother. The creamy version known as Fettuccine Alfredo was oh, uh, popularized and modified it? in the United States. Uh, gaining uh, that uh, richer and uh, more buttery flavor profile that, that is known today. Stop and say that. <laughs> I'm such a fraud. Um, I, my kids really like when I make the Chini Alfredo like from scratch at home. And I always feel like I'm there like mixing the sauce at the stove. And I'm like feeling really in touch with my Italian roots. And uh yeah, I'm just making an American dish right now for my American kids. And uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. And I think that uh, garlic bread is a perfect example. Yes, in Italy, we eat bread with garlic, especially in my region of origin uh, in Tuscany, in the dishes like uh, fettunta or the more well-known uh, bruschetta. But Italian immigrants struggled to find extra virgin olive, olive oil in America. So it was uh, natural to replace it with the most common fat that was butter. Thus, the American version of garlic bread, typically is lettered with butter and sometimes cheese, is more of an American invention than an Italian one. So I had to ask um, to him what the difference was between Northern and Southern Italians. Uh, so let's see if he answers. That's a great question and also very difficult to answer without uh, slipping into generalizations. But I think uh, Italy is a country so culturally fragmented and complex that often the difference between North and South is used to, to simplify what are millennia of history and the uh, unification of our state under a relatively young single flag which happened only 162 years ago. But 
I have a smart free answer regarding food because there is a big difference between Northerns and Southern Italians in the in their culinary habits and uh, food preferences the, and, and oversimplifications. In the North, the cuisine is influenced by proximity to Swiss and Germanic traditions with an emphasis on less carbohydrate-rich food and the preference to cheeses, creamy dishes and meat, along with the special and typical ingredients of the Northern region, like porcini mushrooms, uh, chestnuts, uh, truffles. In contrast, in the South, the diet is richer in carbohydrates, with a greater amount of pasta and bread consumed daily. <laughs> Generalizing, Southern cuisine is more elaborate and influenced uh, by proximity to the sea, with the frequent use of fish, plus rich rich in product like olive oil, olives, pistachios, tomatoes, and then a variety of fresh pasta in many different shapes. Okay, so my next question for him was, is there a combination in Italian-American food that would be considered like cultural or, you know, culinary heresy in Italy? Well, I'd say there are wow. quite a few. <laughs> One notable example of a combination in Italian-American cooking that would be considered really a culinary heresy in Italy is uh, the pairing of chicken with pasta. Particularly what? in dishes like uh, chicken alfredo, or chicken parmesan. In traditional Italian what? cuisine, mixing poultry with like pasta is very life. common. Culinary philosophy in Italy typically involves a clear separation of pasta courses, primi piatti, and meat courses, secondi piatti. But again, this difference, if you really want to dive deeper, is found to be mainly a cultural rather than a taste matter. In short, Italian immigrants in America started putting chicken in pasta for various reasons. First, when they arrived in America, they found noble ingredients in an in in ability they had never had before in their lives, including more abundant and cheaper chickens. Then they adapted to American cuisine, where there, there isn't the, the same separation between pasta and meat courses as in Italy, so they created new dishes that mixed these elements to meet American tastes. And the app serving a richer one dish meal like uh, pasta with chicken. As you can see, even in this case, it's not a story of taste, but uh, of adaptation and a newfound wealth. I'd have to pause right there. I'm going to have to call my mom as soon as I get off and just let her know that her chicken parm uh, dinner is not authentic. I'm sure she'll be thrilled. <laughs> that many Italians look at Italian-American cuisine very, very critically. And I don't share this view. Certainly, there are many examples where Italian-American cuisine treats some recipe and ingredients in a way that is unusual and unacceptable here. But uh, as long as we are talking about uh, tastes, then we, we can talk about it as much as we want. I have my own taste and you have your own. The problem is when the discussion turns into complete and blind criticism of the other cuisine. And this obviously happens, especially from some Italians toward Italian American cuisine. This is what uh, is defined as uh, gastronazionalismo. I think that really only in Italy could such a thing exists. Gastronationalism is the use of food and culinary, culinary traditions to express, defend, and promote national identity. But this becomes a problem when we use it to appreciate what is ours and despise what it isn't. Food is a cultural problem that arises not from protectionism, but from the exchange of matter and ideas 
And the relationship between Italian and Italian-American cuisine is the perfect example of that. Also, I just want to hear him say that again because it sounded so Gastro nationalismo. Uh, let me know if you've heard that word before. It's really interesting to understand we, why these two sister cuisines are actually so different in taste. It's obviously a cultural matter, but this is not a reason to despise and attack a different view from our view regarding food also. So I just thought it was so interesting how he's calling these two cuisines, because I think we've, we recognize that they are, but I think sometimes there's this idea of like, well, Italian American cuisine is just Americans eating Italian food. And that is not the case at all. Most of these people coming from lower social classes and living in Southern Italy and sought better fortune outside Italy despite having few possessions and sometimes facing negative views of Italy that almost forced them to live, they often had one thing in common that was their food culture. Their food culture. Not in the sense of a specific recipe to pass it on, but uh, using food as a, a connective tissue within society. We know these immigrants face numerous challenges, including discrimination, maybe uh, integration difficulties, but they significantly contributed to American society and culture. Americans interested in Italian cuisine might have about uh, dishes that are considered 100% Italian, but are actually 100% American, or better, Italian-American. Wow, so I'm positive. That is so profound. That is so profound. The idea of bringing over a food culture, it's not that they brought a specific recipe necessarily that's been passed down, but this idea of food as a connective tissue within society. This led to the birth of Italian-American cuisine in America, reflecting a new culture. The one of Italian immigrants adapting to the life in the U.S. I don't know why, I feel like that just, um, I just started to tear up hearing that, which is really weird. Uh, I guess that's the problem of listening to it live for the first time. I think just, uh, I mean, oh, my, my dad's side of the family, predominantly, um, predominantly all of my ancestors, not all of them, but most of my ancestors were immigrants to the United States. And it's kind of incredible because, because when they come here, something new has started. It's a new culture. And even this Italian American cuisine, it sounds like is reflecting that new culture. And it's, it's very different than what was already here in the United States at the time. And it's, it's going to be a little different than from where they were back home. And um, I think a lot of times we as Americans, I'll speak for myself, we sometimes feel like we don't have a culture. Uh, and, and there's a lot of joking about that. Uh, but I don't think that's really the case. And uh, so something about what he said just <laughs> kind of struck a chord with me. Oh, sure. Well, uh, I'll start with uh, pepperoni. The type of pepperoni widely used in American pizza is not common in Italy. Italian pizza toppings are usually simpler, and the Italian pepperoni word referred to bell peppers, not a type of salami. And if you order a pizza with salami in Italy, it's more uh, a rustic and less industrial uh, salami, generally very different from American pepperoni. Then uh, the marinara sauce, the thick herb-filled uh, marinara sauce common in the United States, different from the, the straightforward uh, tomato-based sauces typically used in Italy. And again, uh, prepackaged dressings uh, like Italian dressing, uh, are popular in America, but are not typically here. Salads are generally simply dressed with uh, olive oil, vinegar, salt, pepper, and that's it. The use of cheeses like cheddar or Monterey Jack is in pasta dishes is common in Italian American, in Italian American cuisine, but would be not common here where local cheeses like Parmesan, Pecorino or mozzarella are the preferred ones, are, are the alloyed ones. <laughs> These differences highlight how Italian immigrants adapted their culinary traditions to the ingredients and tastes 
available in Peru, creating a distinct cuisine that, while having Italian roots, differing in many aspects from the traditional Italian. Um, I just had a couple questions off him. So my next one was, do Italian chefs like in Italy have any guilty pleasure dishes or maybe items that we'd be surprised to find out that they use frequently? First of all, I'd say barbecue. American barbecue with smoked meat and uh, rich sauces has won over many Italians, especially for its intense uh, flavor and uh, unique cooking technique. Then uh, brownies, <laughs> brownies uh, which are practically everywhere. They are very appreciated for ch chocolate taste and their texture and are a dessert that uh, until a few decades ago was not found in Italy. Always on the surf, pancakes Can you are appreciated for their texture and for being an alternative to traditional Italian breakfast sweets. Then cheesecakes, another dessert increasingly present in our pastry shop. Tex-Mex foods, dishes like uh, nachos, burritos, uh, uh, chili con carne, have uh, recently gained a lot of popularity here. Wow, fried right? chicken, uh, American style fried chicken, can now be found also <laughs> in, in every city. Yeah, there are some dishes that uh, in reality can be found here if you know where to look. More than a, than a return to Italy, it's about uh, meeting the tastes of American tourists from restaurants that are mainly frequented. Americans, Americans in Italy tourists, looking for their spaghetti and meatball who moment. Request <laughs> Italian American dishes, convinced. <laughs> They are our, <laughs> our everyday food. I just Americans are so American, aren't we? <laughs> like uh, this creamier version of carbonara that became popular in the United States and then started to appear in Italy, particularly in restaurants catering to tourists or those looking for an uh, Americanized version of Italian dishes. It's a fascinating example of how a dish that uh, originated in Italy was modified in America and then reintroduced to Italy in its new form. And so it's important to know that the addition of cream in carbonara is still considered non-traditional and even controversial. I wish I was live with him right now because this is a this one is like jaw-dropping revelation for me. How can you even make that dish without cream? What is even happening? I am so American. I I'm so American that I want my cream in that dish. Among uh, culinary culinary purists uh, in Italy, but beyond this, it's uh, it's interesting to see how lately, especially in cities like Milan and Rome, there are restaurants that are starting to offer Italian American cuisine. And I'm not surprised that these type of restaurants are very popular with Italians too. In the end. Yes, we love our cuisine very much, but we are always ready to try new things. And Italian-American cuisine here in Italy is definitely something new and not yet universally known. Maybe there are still many stereotypes, but in my opinion, it could be quite su successful. I might say that um, oven baked spaghetti really happened to me <laughs> <laughs> when uh, I was in university really and still living in Florence, I had the opportunity to meet the American students in Italy for study. I saw for the first time what Italian-American cuisine was when a friend cooked me some oven baked spaghetti. For her, it was completely normal to cook them like that. For me, absolutely wrong. But again, one thing is the difference in taste and another is the difference in culture. So it's such a good point. It's like, is this the traditional thing to do? No. Is pasta cooked with cheese and sauce in the oven going to be delicious? Yes. Um, I've never cooked spaghetti in the oven. I definitely, eat my, I grew up having baked ziti. Um, so I don't know if that's what the, what the difference is with that. I realized that our cuisine in America had become something different and uh, self-contained. In this case, the ingredients part of our culture, but the execution is completely different. 
from how we cook spaghetti here in Italy. A book that uh, I love very much and that uh, perfectly expresses this concept of uh, how Italian-American cuisine has uh, diverged from Italian no? is uh, Red Sauce, How Italian Food Became American by Ian McCallan. McCallan shows that uh, a cuisine's changes that happen when immigrants move to a new country are not a loss, but a gain. It's the birth of something new, and any comparison with another cuisine remains more than anything a matter of taste. But what involves are the, the stories and the facts that led to the birth of certain dishes, which in the end are as much American stories as Italian stories that collide. So beautiful and so profound. I, I hope, um, you know, as I'm working on this channel, you know, it started from this point of me, you know, digging into my family history and it's expanded out. But at the end of the day, this idea of giving time to these stories and, and seeing how things have come together to create this new thing, whether it is, you know, family traditions, you know, that we we take for granted that we don't have, but we really, we do have. I remember growing up in New York as a little girl and there was this Italian bakery. It was called Bella Napoli. My grandpa would bring me there and you could, you, when you walked in, there was just like this completely crazy pastry case that they had. They had fresh bread in the back. And then on the side, there was like almost like a diner feel. You could sit down, order a cup of coffee, order a pastry, sit and talk. I remember the white bags. They were kind of waxy. Um, I remember everything about that experience. And I think my my grandpa, it was kind of caught between two worlds. Like his parents were from Italy and they had immigrated, but he was born in New York. He was an American with Italian heritage. And, and he wanted to pass something on to me. But even looking back at going into Bellinopoly Bakery in Albany, New York, um, I could see that a lot of it was probably an Italian American experience. And so I am interested in learning and then looking back at my experience with my Italian heritage and seeing, well, how much of this was really an American experience? And it wasn't the Italian experience that I thought. Well, I want you guys to check out uh, Guido's blog. You will be laughing. You will learn so much. It's incredible. I'll leave a link to it below, but it's whyitalians.com. Um, I can't believe the things I thought were Italian or not Italian. Like I, I feel like I have to go call my mom and dad and let them know. <laughs> Maybe I should let her watch this video.